Hi, I brought my coffee and today we're talking about why cloud services suck and you shouldn't use them. And for one, I'm not just talking about Apple and my stupid smartwatch. So I'm just talking about apps in general. Remember the day when I was young, like 18, when we all had software on our computers that was just our software. You purchased the software once and then you use it on your computer and your files were offline, they were on your computer because everything else wasn't affordable because in order to upload stuff to the internet, you had first of all to wait forever and ever and ever ever until it was done. I mean, hello, Napster. And you also had to pay for the connection by the minute if you were as unlucky as me because I wasn't a rich kid back then. I'm still not a rich kid. So, Back in the day of the glorious modem times, we used to have software that was on a disc or a CD and you would buy it in a shop, like an actual shop with people in it. And then you would bring it home, unpack it, it was in this whole hideous packaging, you know, you have your game and something, it'll look fancy. Is that still a thing? Because I haven't been to a shop where you can buy software in a decade. But back in the day when I was playing Call of Duty and Half-Life and some other stuff, I remember that I was, you know, you were waiting for a new release of some game and you wanted to go to the store and get it there and bring it home and play the game with your friends. But it was also the same with Windows. I remember that we had a local shop, I think it was called either Media Markt or Saturn. Saturn. <laughs> and the Saturn shop is like a tech shop where you can get really shitty toasters but also software. And then on this one side it was the windows wall where you could buy your windows and you used to look at the wall and be like, oh, dude, there are actually idiots out there who pay for a windows. Dude, what is this lawn mowing shit going on? Yeah, other people have to work too so we're just gonna wait until she's done. Mow faster, mow faster. My coffee's almost empty. This is taking forever. Dude, why this lawn? Like, meow. I want a cat like Louis Rossman's cat, like a black cat. I've always had black cats. Black cats are the best. Oh, nice, lawn mowing is over. Back in the day, you used to have software on your computer and only on your computer. You would not have any kind of cloud software. And then very, very slowly, cloud software came up. I think the first thing was stuff that was just storage, you know, like Dropbox or the Apple cloud services and also my mail provider and, you know, people wanted to use IMAP because it was comfortable to leave your email on an email server forever and ever ever so you could sync it with all your multiple computers or at least that was what it was like for me i literally know nobody who was thinking like oh but you don't want to leave all your personal email on some company's server it's just a company that owes you nothing and also it's for free. So why would you trust them? They're not even open source. Why would you leave your email there? Your invoices, disputes with your spouse or some, I don't know, taxes. Why would you leave that stuff online? Nobody was asking that. People were just like, oh yeah, no more POP3. I want IMAP, great. And the same is with the Apple people. All of them basically were like, Oh, this is so great, I can just drop it. And I remember that I thought it was pretty dumb with all the swiping and just the mouse was just one button and then you have all your stuff in a cloud so you have to upload it. Why would you upload it? I have a hard drive, like I have a portable hard drive where I could put my stuff on. Oh, but it could break and in the cloud it never breaks because they have servers and it's safe there. It's also not private there. Anymore. And I'm talking from a point that, you know, I've lost 80% of my data once because I had a RAID 0 and my RAID controller went up in flames. So yes, all my data was gone before I secured it because I was like, no, fuck it, I don't need that. I'm storing it externally anyway, but I had some stuff that I didn't store externally because I thought, you know, eventually I will back it up, but that day just never came. So Reminder to you, back up your shit. Now the thing is, for a very long time, I resisted the urge to try out any kind of cloud services, beginning with storage, until I had to. It was never me who said, oh yeah, this could be useful. No part of me thought this would be more useful than just using a flash drive and giving it to a friend and having it offline. But people in university, like the first person 
who made me register a freaking Dropbox account was a professor of theoretical physics who was not willing to upload his lecture notes to the university server because he was a fucking weirdo and he just wanted control over his notes or his exercises something he didn't want to leave it on the university server because god forbid then generations after him could have access to it when he would have already been gone from that particular university. That would be so bad for exactly what? Yeah, prestigious dumb shit. I don't know. I don't understand why people do that kind of stuff. Like, oh, after me, nobody can have my stuff and nobody can look at my lecture. Like the true reason behind that, in my opinion, is that 90% of professors just steal from books without citing anything and they just steal the exercises, they steal even the basic structure of their lecture and they don't want, you know, everyone to see that they're massively plagiarizing stuff and that they plagiarize from the professor before them, from their colleagues and from books and so they don't want their lecture notes or their script or something to be public, which is a fucking pity. But anyway, not the point of the video. That was the first time I registered for a cloud service. I had no Google Mail at this point and I had no Google, I didn't have YouTube. I didn't even watch YouTube until 2016, which was when I started my first YouTube channel, which was a German channel. So before that, I had never used YouTube in my life. I thought it was stupid. Same goes for Wikipedia. Most of the time I just thought Wikipedia is full of wrong information and it's not well curated and actual scientists don't have time to curate it, which is why it's full of people who just know a little bit and they are nitpicky about stuff that isn't really worth being picky about. It's just nomenclature and blowing stuff out of proportion and trying to sound important about things that are easy. And being nitpicky about stuff that's easy is the opposite of expertise and being cool. So I was not interested in Wikipedia, I just used it for basic shit. And so most of this online stuff was not relevant for me. The only thing that was relevant were, you know, pages where you could get free papers. My university though had a volume license again for you know Springer and Elsevier and all these publishers so I never really had to pay for a paper and if I couldn't access a paper I could just write the author an email and ask like hey can you send it to me because I don't want to pay 40 bucks on this page and if that wouldn't work yeah we all know where we got our papers right but basically that was the time I was living in when I used my first cloud service which was Dropbox. Even back then I thought this is not something I want and passwords and critical stuff and anything on and even when I was writing my thesis I put it on Dropbox and I was thinking like dude now people can read my thesis what if it pops up somewhere and people say like oh you didn't cite that correctly or something like I was totally paranoid because I'm an overthinker but yeah I think that's absurd because I cited everything. I don't know, <laughs> it was just weird. And then for a long time, nothing really happened, but all of a sudden, like, I don't even know, maybe in the 2000, around 2017 maybe, or yeah, 16, everyone all of a sudden had Google Drive and then Google Photos, and you would share stuff using that. I used to use a service called WeTransfer, which is in Switzerland, I think, and I used it to transfer encrypted archives and stuff because we transfer wouldn't ask. So you could use that by simply typing in an email and you didn't even have to put in any proof that you were a real person, no phone number. And this was like the first thing that freaked me out is when Google asked for my phone number. Have you ever thought about that? How willingly you give away a phone number? I have had my phone number for 23 years years. I don't even give this phone number to people, but I gave it to Google. That feels shameful. And now I have a special phone number just for this kind of shit. I just give them the trash number and you know, if I have a problem with that phone number, I can just change it, but it will still be annoying. And I have a problem with people having my phone number who aren't my friends as in developers at Google. They're not supposed to have my phone number. And then slowly it started developing into this Google Drive thing. 
all the students were using Google Drive. They would not send you an attachment anymore. They would send you a link, which you then had to click and sometimes it didn't work. And then you had to get back to the student and ask them to, to send it again. Some people would use it to kind of miss deadlines and then say, well, but it works on my end. And then you couldn't say, well, you missed the deadline because, oh, it's a technical problem. Yeah, cut them some slack, you know, but People would do that because they knew that. I too now have a Google. I use Google Photos to share albums with friends because, you know, I don't want to use my domain for that because I want to keep that separate, like my uh, YouTube stuff and everything. So I don't have a certain domain for my picture albums. But I think you should really consider that instead of cloud services that are dependent on a company. And I also think that the, like, the best solution would even be not to have your stuff on some server, but to self-host it. I can have my own little server here. I just have to attach a USB drive to my router and then I can set that up as a little server and give people a login, only the people that I want to, and it would be kept private and small and everything. But I believe that most people, they just don't care that much about privacy. They just don't want that. And they think, oh, but it's nice to share stuff. And it's also nice to get feedback and to compare yourself to others. And I think that's very human. That's why all of this works so well. But in the end, what you do is you give them data about your face. I mean, I do that every day because I'm a YouTuber, but that's different. I chose to be a public person. I chose to be a content creator, to be a YouTuber, to, to put my face out there like a celebrity would do, just without the fame. That is an active decision and I knew when my face goes public, I go public, my voice goes public and I give up that part of my privacy. I think it's fundamentally different to the average user who doesn't do that necessarily. Essentially that means that normal people become public figures without really understanding what it means to be a public figure. It means that you get stupid criticism, it also means that you get compared to others, it means that you get nice comments and praise for things that you do well or sometimes stuff that you didn't even think about but people, people just like it. But the thing is I don't think that the average user should give up their privacy that easily. I don't think that the average user needs social media to share photos or should use social media to share photos. You can share photos in an email. People are only looking at it once. It's not like you need your album to be there forever and ever, ever for everyone to be able to see it. Because really think about it. How often did you share that link with your friends? And then how often did your friends look at that link? Did they open it more than once? Did they even comment it or something? You can comment on Google Photos and you can also like Picture is so weird. Why wouldn't you have a blog and just use a password protected blog entry? That would be easier. And then you could write something about it. You know, you could also change it, delete stuff, you know. I mean, if you wanted it to be public, which basically a link to any Google album is, unless you share it privately and then still Google has access to it and can analyze the data and interpret it, which is 100% what they do. Why would you not, if you are giving up that privacy anyway, why would you not at least self-host that or use a blog software or something and go really public? I don't get that. You go through all the trouble of editing the photos, uploading them, curating them, arranging them. You can all do that in the, in the blog and it's free and you still own it. And Google is not saying, oh, now you have more than 10 gigabytes. You have to pay us in order to back up your files and then, you know, selling you a subscription. And I mean, it also leads to a lot of clutter with all these online album possibilities. It leads you to just uploading and uploading and uploading and synchronizing all this useless shit that you will never look at again. You could have all that on your computer. You can have a backup to on another drive or something. You don't need that in any cloud. And then the next step to the monetization of the content that you create for free so these big companies can have your data, can analyze your face, can analyze your habits, use AI to categorize your pictures. I mean, just look at Google, but I can type in ice skating and it will only show me pictures of me skating or of the ring. And it will put together these collections. This is all AI driven. So you can't tell me that they don't do more with that kind of data, that they don't use that to advertise to me or do some subtle shit with it. You can't tell me that. Now, of course, people will go and say, yeah, but I don't really care. I actually want personalized ads and I, I want this kind of stuff. But the thing is, 
that let's get back to the example where you still were the owner of your software back in the 90s and you would just buy it in a shop and you were done with it and was good. You would not have had the problem of them trying to sell you something back in that time. You had all the options that you have now, just not online. It would take the same time to copy something from here to there. Maybe it will go even faster. I mean, not really, but if you look at hardware now, it's slower to upload stuff for most people and to download it back. And then most people don't have a great resolution settings, so they don't even back it up in uh, the original quality. Let's say you back up your photos on your computer or on some drive, it's faster and the only difference is that it's offline. What is the unique selling point of it being online? That's really the question for me because that is the reason why I don't sync anything. I have like one album which is me figure skating and that's not that interesting, but I don't sync other stuff. I don't sync sensitive data. But I believe that a lot of people do that and they don't even encrypt it. Why is that? That is super, super puzzling for me. Point is that you trust a company with your data and companies are never trustworthy. Your friends are trustworthy maybe, or somebody who swore their loyalty to you, your employer, people who are legally bound to you as their customer and you actually pay them. But then there's nothing for a long, 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 time for the list is long and then you know up here is maybe your lawyer you can trust them like a little bit then it comes nothing 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 and down here at at the bottom there's google in terms of trustworthiness they will try everything to make money out of you because these services are free so what makes you think they don't do stuff with your data of course they do stuff with your data and just the fact that people are not bothered by this bothers me because it makes it harder for everyone else these services are more and more accepted. In my example, the university students, they expect you to have it, to use it. They expect you to use Zoom instead of just giving them a call. They expect you to be in a WhatsApp group, even though you don't even have a smartphone. You need to have a smartphone now. You need to have WhatsApp. You know, you can't do it on Signal or at least, you know, or, you know, just give them a call. No, 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 calls, that's for boomers. Just. Just send me a voicemail. Take 10 times the time that you need to do a quick call because you're socially awkward. I'm socially awkward and I don't think that's a good solution. Anyway, my plan for this year is to get rid of all the cloud services. And one of the reasons is privacy, but another reason is also you don't really own any of this. You are not able to customize it. It's pretty much inferior to the path software should be on by now. A good example of this is photo editing in, in Google. For fun, I tried Google One to remove people from photos, which is like their AI feature and oh, look, it's so cool and it doesn't work. It just doesn't look good. It's not good quality. And I can do a better job in GIMP fully open source. The only hurdle is that I have to transfer the photo to my computer and then edit it there and then transfer it back to my phone or not. Have you considered that not everything has to be on a phone by the way? And so I am doing that now and instead of going down the easy road, what I am trying to do right now is to regain ownership and to use my computer more and to use less cloud services and therefore less phone applications. I can edit everything in CapCut, that's fine. I can do a lot of stuff in Google, that's fine. You can do that if you want to. But if I really want to own my own stuff, I need to host my own stuff. I need to host my own data on my own device and I cannot rely on some company and their synchronization issues. After all, if Google servers burn down, all my data is gone. Like if my house burns down, at least that is a me problem, right? And by the way, I think if this apartment burns down and you know, some physical tax report is gone. That is like the least of my problems. I think I could make a pretty good case to the tax office in saying why I could not produce these papers. And if not, what kind of sick dystopia is that where the tax office then tells you, but why didn't you back it up on Google Drive? Like, imagine, imagine the sickness of that. Imagine, no, that's sick. So now my, my what are my solutions? What am I gonna do about the smartwatch? I'm gonna do nothing about the smartwatch, not yet. I haven't found a fair made and good device that has the same options as this one. 
and I really want to analyze my sleep data. I mean, you can use sleep as Android or something and just use your phone, but still your data needs to be stored somewhere and a lot of people just upload it directly to Drive. So yeah, but I think there are apps that you can use, you know, if you want to analyze sleep data and just back it up as a, a zip folder. So that is what I did before. Maybe I'm gonna revert to that. But right now I just really like this cause it's useful. And this is how I am being complacent. And I understand that part of it is not ideal. I don't want you to be perfect and I don't wanna be perfect myself, but I just want you to at least see where you are consenting to them doing something with your data and that it's not necessarily good, that in a lot of cases, it's probably even evil. So I just want you to think about that and to think about the vast amounts of data that you probably have somewhere and that are not taken care of, you should get an order. And like speaking to the theme of this channel, which is like simple lifestyle, minimalist lifestyle, keep it minimal with your data. Just do your backups, have two hard drives, that's what I do. I have two hard drives um, and they are mirrors of each other. So I have two backups. So in case one hard drive is lost or destroyed or something, I will still have the other one and that's fine for me. That's enough redundancy. I don't need online redundancy. I only for like, for like, actually the tax report is a good thing because one thing that would make sense, you could have your, your taxes in the cloud as an, in an encrypted folder or something with a password protection. I wouldn't have something with my tax ID on it there, but you know, some pens I bought and I want to write off. Sure. I would store that in the cloud because it's very much meaningless. Like nobody cares how much toilet paper you bought in 2020. So my issue is not with that kind of stuff. My issue is with people uploading their sensitive data somewhere and people thinking that some of their data isn't even sensitive when it clearly is like their naked pics or something like that. And they think it's safe in the cloud, which is not. Anyway, that's what I'm doing. Last but not least, I have a lot of beef with online applications. Like I am not a fan of Microsoft Word, but I would not recommend to anyone to use Google Docs instead. Why would you use Google Docs and why would you keep all your email on your IMAP? Unless it's completely not sensitive email and you just need it for, I don't know what. It's made to be for sensitive communications and they should be encrypted. But what I really don't get is why people do everything in the cloud, like even printing from their browser and they edit all the stuff in their browser with the limited software that is basically a copy of Office. And even Office has a subscription now. That's crazy. And they're slow, dude, they're so slow. I remember when this stuff came up, I was like, I'm never gonna use this. It's slow. It's even slow on a fast computer. Why would anybody put up with this? And now they're better, partially, depends on how many pages you have. But it's not like you can write your thesis on that. And I think there are people writing their theses on that. No, it's wrong so many levels. But can you imagine? This really comes down to the difference between millennials and Gen Z. Gen Z has not known the golden times. They do not know what it was like to have a fast computer. Like back in the day before the internet got bloated and now it feels physically slow when it's really not. It's just that pages are bloated and apps are bloated and your phone is bloated. These computers are awesome. They have so much power and speed and you could use them to do amazing things if you would only keep your fucking HTML simple and throw out all the stupid scripts that you don't need to make a drop down. Damn. So yeah, no, I'm agitated. I want to be agitated. This is not right. <laughs> this is dumb. So yeah, at this point, I am not using any more cloud apps. I made another video about why I don't use Office and it's basically the same reason. I want ownership over my applications. I want to buy software once and then it's mine. I don't want to pay a monthly fee or a yearly fee or a decadely fee. I just don't want to pay any fee. I want to buy it once, then it's mine. I do with it whatever the hell I want. I don't want Microsoft or Google or any other party to come back and say, hey, would you like to unlock this feature, which we have now, but you need to subscribe for it. Just pay $1 more a month and you will have this feature. How awesome is that? Google, 
not. My car is 20 years old. It lasted that long. I want cars that last 20 years minimum because it still drives me everywhere. It's a fine car. It has an airbag. It doesn't need any other fancy stuff and no electronics and I can repair it myself if I want to and it doesn't tell me to go see maintenance on a little screen that I can't read because I'm getting old and you know my car just leaves me alone that's what I want from my software I want my software to just leave me the fuck alone and be like you paid for me you can use me forever and ever and ever ever and you can even pass the license on to your kid I don't want my software to be like well first of all I only work on your phone and on certain devices and I only synchronize with myself and I only work on Windows or Apple machines and if you want me to back up your data into a folder you have to pay for it on a subscription basis and if you want me to maintain my basic functionality well you guess what you have to pay for it on a subscription basis what keeps them from saying at some point you know what if you don't want your files to be public you have to pay for that or, you know, if you want your files to be safe, you need to pay for that. Like the dystopian idea behind this would be that at some point they say, you know what, you agree to us selling your data in a not really anonymized way unless you pay for us not selling your data because this product is not even free, but it's cheap. So you need to pay more. What keeps them from saying that? And they're, all, they're already saying that basically, some of them. So I don't think this is going into the right direction. The right direction for me would be I self-host my stuff. I have ownership over my files. I have ownership over my software. And this is exactly why I use Linux because when I install software, then it is on my computer. I can actually see the source code and I can see if it's doing something fishy and I can keep it from doing stuff that I don't want to. I can fully customize it. I can use it whenever and for however long I want. I can even choose the version that I want to use. I don't need to update even to the newest version of something if I don't want to. I can use it on my old machine and so on. I could praise open source software for days. So yeah, that's it.